Hey, this is Red Band coming to you from the world famous comedy store <laughs> for a brand new episode of Kill Tony. Give it up for Tony Hinchcliffe. Hi, everybody. Come on, make some noise. You're at the number one live podcast in the world. Oh. Make it more volume. Yeah. Brian Red Band's here, ladies and gentlemen. What's up, guys? Almost forgot where it was. We are in Los Angeles tonight. We are back home. We just flew in from uh, beautiful Des Moines, Iowa today, and we take off early tomorrow morning to Appleton, Wisconsin. The fun train just keeps moving along. We go to uh, Appleton. Still, I think, maybe a couple tickets available for that. Uh, tickets available for Milwaukee the next night, and uh, Chicago has very few tickets left for Thursday night. That's a big show at Thalia Hall. And then Madison, Wisconsin the night after that, and uh, we just sold out Minneapolis, Minnesota on Sunday, uh, Poughkeepsie, New York the week after that. Only We come back on that Monday to be here at home with Brian Holtzman, and then that Wednesday we fly out to Poughkeepsie, New York, Next night, we just added a second show to the sold-out Kill Tony at the Gramercy Theater. So two shows in one night, New York, New York. So get tickets for that second show before everyone at the first show just goes out the door and buys them before you can uh, that night. It's very exciting. And you want to break some news, Brian? Let's do it. This is one of our biggest announcements ever. You guys excited about this? How about you guys in the upper deck? Are you guys excited to be here at all on a Monday? There you go. <laughs> this breaking news is to announce a one night only show. One show only, one night only in a massive venue. It is going to be our biggest audience attended show at once ever at the Fillmore in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. We sold out a bunch of shows in Philly uh, early this year or late last year, and we are coming back on a vengeance, a massive, massive venue. That's a huge place. Tickets man. go on sale this Thursday, June 13th at 10 a.m. Uh, under the Live Nation banner. You can use the code GROOVE to get your tickets first. The general public, it goes on sale this Friday, the 14th at 10 a.m. That's uh, the thefillmorephilly.com for tickets. Live Nation on Thursday. Use the promo code GROOVE, and uh, you get it first. And the train just keeps moving along. The great Ryan J. Ebelt is here tonight, everybody. He's drawing tonight's episode. He draws all the posters. He draws all the road posters, which are amazing. Dude, those things sold the fuck out, man. Yeah, like, people love these road tour posters. Yeah. They go to the show. They buy a poster afterwards. We sign them for them when we're on the road. And, uh, yeah, it's really exciting. He also designed the uh, newest Kill Tony logo, which is going to be, as of on tomorrow, drums. on a pin. Uh, Glow-in-the-dark Kill Tony pins Sweet. now available thanks to uh, co 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 collaboration <laughs> between Ryan J. Belt and uh, our friends over at Rockin' Pins, the great Mauricio. Yes, uh, he's awesome. Hell, yeah. It's also visible here on our Kill Tony Summer Tour uh, bucket that we're going to be using for the next two weeks until the end of the tour. Uh, it's a goddamn bucket of destiny. A bunch of people signed up tonight to chat with us, the band, and our guest, which brings me to our guest. Oh. How about that? Uh, he has been on the show quite a few times. He is uh, one of my favorite comedians on the planet. Um, he is one of our favorite guests. He is the star of Historical Roasts, now on Netflix. He is uh, going to be at Roast Battle at Clusterfest. He's the uh, host of Roast Battle, of course, on Comedy Central. He's also going to be at the Comedy Central Roast of Alec Baldwin, which was just announced. He is the Roast Master General, bumping mics with Dave Attell, also on Netflix, and they're going to be at Harrah's uh, this Friday, SoCal uh, on Saturday. Uh, tickets available at RoastmasterGeneral.com. Make some noise for him. The one, the only, Roastmaster General, Jeffrey Ross, everybody. 
Hell yeah, there he is. He's back. Hell yeah, buddy. You know, Donka Shane. <laughs> I love uh, I love this. You have so much going on right now. You're absolutely everywhere. Every time I have one of those like Netflix smart TVs, so uh -huh. I just skip cable and and my TV just stays on Netflix in my living room all the time. And your Thank face you. is all over my living room. It is on the front page <laughs> of Netflix right now. Globally, historical roast is a massive hit. Trending. Has anybody seen it? Yeah. Hell yeah, that's fun. But I'll be honest with you. I yeah. love historical roasts, but my favorite thing in all of comedy, I've always said this before you guys even started doing it on the road or making specials, when you and David Tell get together, it is one of the most magical things. I mean, it is yes. Pink Floyd, yeah, Led Zeppelin. You. It is rock and roll. And I uh, love him. We were in Vegas all weekend together, and he made me laugh so hard I was crying oh, on He's stage. unbelievable. And you two just push each other to the limits. And it's so cool that you're uh, taking it all over the road. California, Washington, New Jersey, Texas, New York, RoastmasterGeneral.com. Thanks, Tony. Yeah. Have you ever been to that Morongo, by the way? Uh, I Dave, keeps, Dave keeps making me play casinos that I never heard of before. <laughs> so that he can smoke cigarettes inside? Yeah. It's <laughs> like, bam, bam, even bam. the name Moron Go. <laughs> <laughs> makes me want to be out there but you know what the truth is the netflix thing um i got an account the night that historical roast dropped wow really yeah. i didn't even get my own netflix account when <laughs> bumping mics came out i was still using my cousin ed's i was like oh I, I think i'm good i don't watch anything anyway and then finally i got so excited that i signed up for netflix on memorial day <laughs> I love it. Well, well, thanks for having me on, Tone. I uh, mean, you got the hottest show in Sunset Strip over here. I love here. it. I Selling love it. out everywhere. We go back to back the two hottest shows. I you're think the new. Uh, you're the new. Um, you're the new um, um, Steel Panther. Yeah, no, it's true. <laughs> I, I, that hit me the other day. People, someone told me that. They go, you know, we, don't, we, we used to have this much fun on Mondays with Steel Panther. Now we always come here. Yep. And it was like such an honor because uh, you were the first person to take me to Steel Panther. That was a fun show. I yeah. still love them. They're, they're playing all the time. I love it. Where are they at now? Vegas or something? They, go to, they tour. Yeah, wow. yeah Vegas they tour. Uh, speaking of bands, Jeff, we have one on this show. Believe I was it or not, where they uh, are. you guys like uh, you guys like you guys fans of the Kill Tony band? Anybody here? Huh? They're one of my favorite. Another one of my favorite things in all of comedy. Every single episode, they commit to being and staying in different characters. Uh, a lot. Of, sometimes it's the return of some of their famous characters. Sometimes it's the debut of a brand new character that we've never seen before. So let's see what happens tonight. It's the best damn band in the land, the Kill Tony Band. Jeremiah Watkins, Joelberg, Joel Jimenez, and Chroma Chris. Here we go. <laughs> wow, definitely construction, guys. <laughs> wow, look at this. Definitely construction, guys. My God. <laughs> Goodness, this is very exciting. Uh, clearly, uh, Jeremiah Watkins is a uh, transitioning construction worker. Pride week. Talk about packing a lunch. What do you got there? Oh, baloney again. <laughs> What's your name? Oh, my name is Baloney Pete because my <laughs> wife always packs me baloney sandwiches every day. <laughs> All right, Baloney Pete. We've seen you on this show before, right? Yeah, great memory. <laughs> I mean, I, I did just... What's on the sandwich? Is it mayonnaise or mustard? Uh, it's uh, mayonnaise with uh, spicy brown Dijon mustard. Would you like one? No, no, thank you. But maybe later. Maybe lunchtime. All right. I've, I've never seen a construction worker keep his gloves on while uh, attending to his lunch yeah. before. Garden gloves. Whoa, that's real baloney, baloney, Pete. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my wife packed it again. Oh. <laughs> you, you brought a dollar and 19 cents worth of baloney. I can see the price tag on You got a, quite the deal there. Wow. Yeah, I might have to leave my wife. <laughs> and then uh, clearly over there next to you, we got a Chroma Chris. How you doing, Chroma? Good. The name is, uh, the name is Jack, Tony. Jack Hammer. Oh, the famous Jack Hanna. Jack Hammer. Wait, are you porn guys? 
<laughs> I, uh, really, my last name is Hoff, but Hammer just sounds more manual, so I uh, just go with Hammer. Jack Hoff is my real last name. I love your voice doesn't get any deeper as a construction worker. That's uh, Nope. <laughs> and then back here, clearly, we have Mexican Kimbo Slice. Uh, this is <laughs> incredible. <laughs> I don't know why. A cons I've never seen a construction worker that looks like a Lego man before. <laughs> more than this right now. Jolbert Joel Jimenez. Uh, the name is Jonathan Rodriguez, uh, a.k.a. Two Hammers, because I'm always too hammered to go to work. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to wow. call you Two Hammers. It's going to be fun. Oh, yeah. We have the construction workers. We have the Roastmaster General, Red Band, which leads me to one thing and one thing only. This is also a construction zone. It is the Kill Tony Bucket of Destiny, everyone. <laughs> Earlier in the evening, I think around 150 people signed up for the chance. I guess we could have just allowed everybody in the bucket by the looks of the I kept putting my cigarettes out, and I didn't realize. <laughs> uh, and we whittled it down to, uh, to 30, and uh, so there's 30 names in the bucket now. So if your name gets pulled out of the bucket, and by the way, David, can you let them know that they can let any other uh, comedians that want to come in, they can let them come in now. I don't know what these, this restriction thing, I don't, I don't like Show up. They love it. They must be Thank oh, you. wow. Look at that. 40 people bought tickets that didn't show up. All right. Well, I guess maybe hold a couple open then. I it's the uh, playoffs tonight. Yeah. And a uh, big sports uh, thing. Pride right? hangover. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> so if I pull your name out of the bucket, you know how it goes. You get 60 seconds uninterrupted on this stage. You know your time is up when you hear the sound of a kitten. That means wrap it up then, or else you're going to bring out the angry West Hollywood bear. <laughs> Here we go. You guys excited about this? It's Kill Tony Live with Jeff Ross from the Comedy Store on the Sunset Strip. How exciting. I hear the great Aphrodite over there, the Apollo 13. We got the whole family here tonight. All right. Your first comedian getting an uninterrupted 60 seconds and then chatting with all of us about his life. Put your hands together for Alex Rob. Alex Rabe. R A A B E. Here oh, we go. Here comes Alex yeah. Rob. Bring it up, yeah. our first comic. Yeah. One more time for Alex Rob, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Alex Robbie, and I have to tell all you guys I recently had my booty hole eaten out recently. It was wonderful, I have to tell you. Has anybody else had it done before? You look like the kind of man who has it done before. Was it good? Yeah, it's fucking awesome. I love it. It was great, you know? It's like one of those times I just kind of want to, like, get a little bit more. Like, she tried to stick a little in, and I was a little nervous about it. But it's all right, okay? Uh, recently, I went to the ocean. The what? Of all things, right? I just wanted to say hey to Mother Nature. She didn't, say, she didn't say nothing back. What a bitch. Just waved. Ugh. Terrible. Terrible. What is this? A bad joke. Why would I even start with something like that, right? What the fuck? Right? Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> so, I... Well, that's my there time. There you go. 60 seconds. Alex Rob, heck yeah! How are you, man? Good. How you doing? Is this your first time on the show? Yes. Wow. I feel Alex like Rob just robbed us of one minute of our <laughs> life. <laughs> I mean, I didn't want to correct you, but it's Robbie. Robbie, sorry. <laughs> Love the shirt. Buddy. Eat Thank that you, microphone, man. You you, you you had the microphone the whole time under here. Like you really have to get really close. Yeah, you gotta go work ahead. on the talking to the microphone. Gotcha. How, you been, how long have you been doing stand up, Alex? Uh, three and a half years. Three and a half years. Look oh at my that. God, that's Still can't terrible. get the mic down. Three and a half years. What the fuck, right? <laughs> wow. Not even this construction crew could fix that. <laughs> yeah. you, you look like Gene Wilder. <laughs> <laughs> I do my best really is interesting. Gene look, Milder. Look out at that audience so they can get a good look at you. Uh, instead, of, You're facing, you know they're that way, right? There you go. This Hell yeah, way, there he is. That, I like your look, Alex. You look like if Stretch Armstrong and Ben Askren had a baby. It's an inside <laughs> yeah. reference, but oh, only one guy. I wasn't rich enough to afford it. He looks own. like Jeremiah if Jeremiah was in a real construction accident. Yeah. <laughs> 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 what do you, uh, tell us more about you, Alex. What do you do for work? 
I, I actually am in construction. I, uh, really? Oh, wow, <laughs> look at that. I build and install IKEA kitchens. It sucks. IKEA kitchens? Yeah. My goodness. That's so specialized. <laughs> you call that construction? <laughs> no, it's not. It's not construction. <laughs> yeah, you know, my tool belt has an Ellen wrench on it. That's I'm doing it. my best, all right. <laughs> and by Ellen wrench, I mean Ellen DeGeneres. <laughs> My goodness, Alex. So uh, how long have you been putting together uh, Ikea for? Uh, about three, four years. Three or four years. The same piece? <laughs> <laughs> same ones. The same asshole telling me how to do it the whole time. He's got a picture. He's looking at it. He's like, this is... All really right, Alex, 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 Alex. Uh, relax, how, relax. Uh, how long have you been in a Wild Stallions cover band? <laughs> three years as well. All right. Alex, uh, tell us more about you. Are you from Los Angeles? I'm from Wisconsin, actually. Ah, you really you, close to the Appleton area that you were just at. Very good, very good. Do a lot. Uh, is this what everybody looks like there? Unfortunately, yeah. All right. Uh, what do you do for fun, Alex? Eh, dick off. Uh, go to the beach, volleyball, everything, hike. You know the regular old bullshit. Come on, there must be something—a hobby that you are into that uh, is specific to you. Charcoal art. Really? Yeah, of all things, right? How'd you get into that? I think that's called blackface. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Bacon soda. I usually don't put it on my face. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh. It's not finger painting. Yeah. <laughs> uh, my goodness. Uh, will you have a girlfriend? Nah. Wow, you said that. So sad. Uh, nah. You, you don't want to know about that. Why? Why don't I want to know? Uh, now I really want to know. Oh, now you really want to know. Uh, physical abuse. What? Physical abuse. What about physical abuse? Well, you know, she beat me up. Is that true or are you like Unfortunately, kidding? Unfortunately, yes, that's true. You're saying it like you're kidding. I'm not. What did she what did she do to you? She hit me. Yeah, where'd she hit you? Point she to you, point, point me. on your she, body she to where she hit you. She spit in my face. Alex, stop trying to be funny. It's not working. I'm not. It really did fucking happen, I'm, though. Like, tell us, then, this is a real interview part. Tell us, like, the real, what really happened. Exactly what I just said. I mean, I, I can't get any more Jesus, real than I that, can, dude. I can't even make it's you traumatic. interesting. It's traumatic. Hey. Oh, come on. It is on. very traumatic. Is this that tra sucked. Like, fuck, dude, I lost... Did you really? Shit ton of friends from it. How did you lose friends from getting beat up? Because they believed her and not me. Oh, yeah. you used to beat up your girlfriend. Now yeah, I get yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, that's what happened. I used yeah, to. Yeah, there's the truth I was looking for. You see how happy everybody that's what everybody is now? Everybody always says. <laughs> that's the problem. Everybody always says that. No. It's like uh, if you get angry about it, oh, all of a sudden she's the one that's the victim. No. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> okay. What did she say that you did to her? What did I say? What, what did, did she, she say, say that you did to her? <laughs> what did you say? Okay. Don't, don't ask me. Okay. I wasn't around her when that forget shit was it, happening. Forget it. Forget it. How long has it been since that last relationship ended? About a year and a half. My goodness. Well, according to everything that you like to do for fun, you already Good. have a Tinder profile ready to go. Hikes, I do. Beaches. Yeah, unfortunately. Uh, wow. It's awesome. Man. Did she break up with really you in good. a construction zone? Because that would be three years, actually. <laughs> no, it was on Christmas. Oh, okay. Uh, Merry hey, Christmas, is it true right? you like stuff in your pooper? What was that? Is it true you like stuff in your pooper? You made really awkward eye contact with an audience member, and you're like, yeah, you can relate to me, and this guy's like, I don't really know, man. You got 60 seconds. I mean, it was actually very interesting. And then that guy was looking at you like, now you got 40 seconds. You're like, help me out. And he, this guy, that guy's like, no, I'm not going to help you out. <laughs> and, then, and then that guy's like, now you got 30 seconds. And you're like, come on, man. You put stuff in your poop. He's like, not me, man. You're gay. <laughs> Fuck yes. Baloney Pete giving us a slice of the good stuff. Well, Alex, uh, I, I, I find you to be uh, uh, an interesting human. Um, for three and a half years, man, I would, uh, you know, I'd fucking, uh, I would definitely at least get closer to that microphone. Your thing isn't really that it's far away, it's that you put it under your chin like that, and when you're talking that so you're direction, but instead you should just have it like uh, almost in front of your mouth, but not exactly. I think it's there. better under his chin. <laughs> Congratulations on getting pulled out of the bucket, though, buddy. There he goes, Alex Rob, everybody. He's on Twitter at Alex Rob Comedy, R A A B E, all one word. There he goes, Alex Rob. 
It's not an easy job getting uh, getting it started up here tonight. Not an easy job watching it either. <laughs> <laughs> not the greatest American hero. <sighs> Oh, there he goes. Okay, let's see what happens next. You guys get it? It's clearly, clearly anything can happen and anyone can get pulled out of the bucket. Put your hands together for your next comedian. He goes by the name of Zach Vile. Zach Vile. Zach, Zach. Hey. Where you at, Zach? Zach Vile. Hammer time. Walking a mile. Uh. Here he come. Uh. One more time for Zach Vile, everyone. Uh, you guys fans of Roadhead in here? We like Roadhead? Yeah. All right, I'm a bit conflicted, guys. You know, uh, multitasking, not a problem for me. I just hate giving my mom a ride to work. <laughs> that was a warm-up. That was a warm-up. We're trying to build trust, you know. It's very hard to build trust when you look like JonBenet Ramsey and her killer. So, my dad said, when are you going to cut that hair? I said, when that joke stops crushing. Probably pretty soon. Uh, I grew up pretty poor, but I was actually in a fraternity, uh, only because my college had a fraternity for the financial aid students. Yeah, it was the only frat house. It was Section 8. Yeah, our letters were EBT. It's a lot of, a lot of fun. There you All go, right, thanks, Zach guys. Vile. Look at that. Hell yeah! How about a hand for the band rocking and rolling tonight? Hell yeah! So Zach, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Heck first yeah. time. Indeed, first time. Yeah. How long have you been doing stand up? Uh, three years. Three years. Yeah. Wow. What a difference. Uh, <laughs> what a difference. <laughs> what a difference putting the microphone in front of your mouth makes and writing <laughs> jokes and executing them and not beating your ex girlfriend. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> that was a lot of fun, Zach. Where are you from? Uh, Fayetteville, North Carolina. Fayetteville. Yeah. Wow. Represent. Looks All like right. you have some fans out there. Cool. Fayetteville. Great. What's that part of uh, North Carolina like? Uh, it's a big military base, so there's not a lot going on. Just kind of a lot of army dudes. Your dad in the military? No, my granddad was. That's why we ended up there. Wow, you call it a granddad? Yeah. <laughs> you really are from what Fayetteville, call North Carolina. Grandpa? Okay. What do you call it? Granny. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Granny. <laughs> Peepaw. Peepaw. Yeah, that's what Jeremiah calls it. Peepaw, right? Mima. Is, is that what you call your grandpa? Ding dong. Uh, big pop and little pop. Hey, <laughs> <Beep up> a <laughs> Hey, has anybody ever told you you look uh, like the bad ghost from Ghostbusters One? <laughs> Zach, take his a few name steps. Is, his take name a, is Vigo. Few, He's in a painting. Take a few steps this way so that you can face the audience. Yeah, sort of. there you All go. Right. Yeah, he looks like, like the painting ghost from Ghostbusters One. Hey! Anybody, anybody I, I, can't tell, I can't really tell. There's something that he reminds me of. I can't. David really Lee Roth. David Lee Roth. Is that what you said? <laughs> sure, if it's funnier. Oh, okay. It wasn't. He looks like an extra from Dawson's Creek. Like. Fuck yeah! They actually filmed that in North Carolina. Yeah. Wow! Yeah. He looks like that. he lived in Dawson's Creek. <laughs> <laughs> he looks, looks like, like they more. found you in Dawson's Creek. Yeah. <laughs> Discovered face down in. What's Dawson's your day Creek. job? Uh, I bartend. Where at? Uh, Empire Tad. No, it's just a craft beer bar in Burbank. Nice. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Well, I thought you had some, some good jokes. Keep working on it. Thank yeah. you so much. I appreciate yeah. that. Darts away? Uh, thank you. How long, uh, how long have you lived in Los Angeles, Zach? Uh, two years. Two years. Well, how's the transition going for you? you, you uh, I'm getting used to it. What's your living situation? Uh, I live with a couple friends. One guy I lived with in the Bay Area, and the mm -hmm. other one I went to school with back yeah. home. What so. do they do? Uh, one of them is into sound. And uh, the other one runs, what? like sound design <laughs> for film and stuff. Yeah, very yeah, good. Years. And the other one runs a nonprofit. So, oh. so they're both unemployed. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> what do you like to do for fun, Zach? Any uh, fun hobbies or fun facts about you that we should know about? Surprise, but I'm really into like skateboarding. It's cool. Ah. Yeah. It's cool. Yeah, yeah. Oh, heck yeah. You ever get hurt doing that? I'm sorry. You ever get hurt? Never broke a bone, but yeah, I've sprained some ankles and oh. scrapes. <laughs> You ever uh, you ever use wrist guards while you're skateboarding? The, uh, no, never. No. no. What do you what would what would you call a guy that you saw using wrist guards while skateboarding? 
<laughs> not a skater. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, that was mean. <laughs> not a skater. <laughs> <laughs> I, <laughs> what's going on over there, baloney Pete? I just grip my sledgehammer. <laughs> Well, Zach, uh, that's a lot of fun. How about you? You in love? You ever take a girl back to uh, your place with your sound friend and your uh, nonprofit buddy? <laughs> couple times, yeah, yeah, yeah. A couple yeah. times. We're, 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 like, give us an example of where you like. What, where does a guy like you meet a girl? You're a good-looking guy. You got that fucking surfer hair. Thank you, thank you. Uh, bars, you know, on uh-huh. the apps, it's a good one. To you, do. you ever, uh, you ever take a girl home that you met while bartending? I have, yeah. How did that work out for talking you? Talking an it's I beam and A beam. What are we talking about here? What was that baloney we Pete? An I beam and A beam. What are we talking about here? The Burbank girls are pretty easy. Very. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. What? There's, There's nothing to do out there yeah, except me. Disney so. ladies. <laughs> how 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 quick into the first date do you tell them to put the lotion in the basket? <laughs> put the fucking lotion in the basket. Hey. Got it. <laughs> Uh oh, Joelberg's burgin' up back there. Look out! No, but really, how quick into the first <laughs> day? Second day. We'll wait till the second. Cool. Good answer. Sure. You, you uh, yeah. You ever uh, keep a girl? You have a, ever have a girlfriend for a while? Or you yeah, I actually know? moved to Santa Cruz from North Carolina with my girlfriend at the time. Ah. Uh, and that lasted a year. How did that end? Why? What happened? Ah, uh, I, I started doing comedy. That's what I, and. So, like, I bartended a few nights a week. The other nights I did comedy, and there was no more time. So something had to go. Ah, interesting. (laughs) Wow. Look at that. I love your honesty. That's a beautiful answer. All right, Zach. Well, a lot of fun, man. Great set. You really showed uh, how it's done up here. Way to get it going, man. Zach Vile, everybody. He's on Twitter. It's Zach V Z A C K V E E. We are, uh, we're flying through it. You saw both sides of it. This is really fun, Tony. What a fun night. Yeah, it's already, we've already had some laughs. It's also been very compelling at one point. What an eclectic audience, too. Indeed, indeed. We have the beautiful Cassandra Cass out there. Dressed like a vagina. Literally. Cassandra, I tried one of the cookies you gave us. I I licked it. It was so good. She made vagina cookies. What kind of cookies were those? What do you call that? Vagina cookie. It didn't taste like vagina. <laughs> Way better. Come to think of it, maybe it did. I pulled another name out of the bucket. Let's make some noise for Lorraine Lopez, everyone. Let's see what happens here. Lorraine Lopez. Lorraine. Yeah. Lorraine. Like you did that day. Lorraine Lopez. One more time for Lorraine. So I didn't know that I was a Mexican until I was a lot older. I just thought that I was a really good swimmer. <laughs> but it turns out that my grandparents swam across the border, so I just got the gene. Yeah. Water polo some captain. Thank you. Uh, but I'm not your typical Mexican because I don't have any kids. Yeah. And to be honest with you guys, at my age, I should be a great-grandmother. Yeah. I just got out of a three-year relationship. <laughs> turns out I was the only one in it. I read a book called To Date a Man, You Have to Act Like a Man, so I started to act like a man. Turns out men don't want to date men unless they're gay. Right? Has anyone else here dated a gay guy for five years and didn't know it? Right? Well, my ex-boyfriend, he used to give guys lap dances at a gay bar. He didn't even work there, okay? There were signs. And um, when we did make love, he would make me wear a baseball cap. Yeah. I just thought he really loved the Dodgers, guys. Yeah. Thank you. Wow. That was really good. A lot of jokes. A lot of jokes. A lot of punchlines in a minute. Very good. How long? Come back so the audience can see you. Like, yeah, oh, yes. Step yeah, back, uh, like, step back, step back like four oh, feet. Yeah, yeah, yeah there you go. There now you we go. can all see each other. Hi, Lorraine. Welcome Hi. to the show. She's got first? a nice frame. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Jesus. Keep your baloney in your pants over there. Oh, you're saying she's walking by a construction site? So you got to... I get it now. That's good. <laughs> Lorraine, don't worry about these guys. They're full of baloney. <laughs> <laughs> Lorraine, that was awesome. How long have you been doing comedy? A little over a year. A little over a year. All yeah. here in Los Angeles? Yeah. So cool. What yeah. made you start? 
Uh, something you've always wanted to do or no I was doing some improv for fun uh-huh. and um, no I just went through a bad breakup and I got drunk and I went to a mic and then it was great that's how it starts yeah. that's how it goes yeah. you went through a bad bad breakups make funny comedians did you talk about the breakup on stage that night like I did it but I think that I had never I would never dated in my 20s and once I turned 30 I went on a crazy rampage and yeah, so then I just started talking about it constantly. That sounds like I was just being very honest. It's like the marvelous Mrs. Maisel. The yeah. night of her breakup, yeah. she started doing stand up. Yeah. Check That's it out. Good. Marvelous Miss Martinez, eh? <laughs> 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 My goodness. So you re- you're a real Los Angeles Mexican. I am. Through yeah. and through. What part of town were you raised in? Rancho Cucamonga. Oh, yeah. Even Jesus. Even yeah. that. Wow. Hey. Oh. You know that ranch. part of LA <laughs> <laughs> called the Rancho Cucamonga. What do, uh, what do you what are your thoughts on uh you're a real Oh yeah. <laughs> Joel's oh, so nice. Mexican he wears a Dodgers hat over his construction hat. <laughs> what are your thoughts on uh on uh Mexican girls from Rancho Cucamonga? You are our senior Mexican correspondent here on Kill Tony. Rancho Cucamonga is not Los Angeles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. True. All the LA natives Very agreeing true. with Joel here. Uh, that's cool, Lorraine. What do you do for work? I work at a bar. You work at yeah, a bar? Yeah, bar- uh, uh, Waitress? Mm-hmm. Oh, very cool. Is yeah. that true about your ex? How much of that is true about your ex-boyfriend be- uh, dancing for guys at gay bars? Any of it? I mean, he did work at a gay bar. Uh-huh. Yeah. And he loved it. He was like acting and stuff and making a lot of money, but he always wanted to keep working. Wow. Yeah. D- <laughs> you, you, didn't see that, you didn't see that coming at the beginning? Was there like... You it just like the salty kisses or something? Like what? Oh, Hi, Red you. Band. Come on. Yeah. Salty kisses. You're disgusting, no. Red Band. Wow. So uh, is it really true? Do you think he's gay? Was he actually gay? I think gay? he's in the club. I mean, yeah. I mean, now that I'm single, I mean, we didn't have sex ever for five years. So Ever? Never. You never right. had there sex we did. We did. The first time we had sex, he couldn't get it up. He said it was because a baseball hit his balls when he was a kid oh my so god it was but I, as soon as i started dating i was like oh this is not normal i believe that balls have smacked up against his balls before yeah. but I, I don't think it was a baseball as a kid yeah. you're like <laughs> you're like what are you what are you gonna do with this pussy he's like i keep dodging it <laughs> <laughs> yes the old famous baseball whistle yes there it is i love i hate i love Wait, it when baseball he, <laughs> Baseball love it doesn't have love it when the referee in baseball blows his whistle. Uh, wow, I never knew that. <laughs> did you guys keep? Did you keep dating him after that? I mean, after he told me that. Yeah. Yeah, that's that was like the first time we had sex. Was did he told me that, and I thought it was like he's such a good guy, and I kept through it. Yeah, thank goodness. Did you guys ever do it? Did what? Did you guys ever wind up doing it? No. Yeah, we years? did, but he'd always accidentally put it in my butt. Are you no. serious? I love this. See, Lorraine, Lorraine gets kill Ugh. Tony interviews. Can I just? I, th- tell I think yes. you mean. <laughs> I think you mean your dugout. <laughs> Safe. Wow. You put it in your Rancho Cucabunga. It's third base, if I've ever heard of it, dude. <laughs> Is that really true? Would no, hundred percent. So he would he he'd be able to <laughs> really keep going if it was your butt, but not if it was your uh, vagina. That is so fucking interesting. Yeah. Yes. So you're. Okay. I mean, <laughs> you you calling that guy gay, but what? She just got a weird vagina. You know what oh, I mean? Oh shit. <laughs> Not true. No. All right, prove it. <laughs> <laughs> Accidentally putting it in your butt. Oh my god, I'm so sorry, baby. <laughs> yeah. Man, this is such a. When he put it in your butt, missionary. Like no, from behind. Right. And you no, like with a crane. What do you think, Jeff? <laughs> <laughs> you say accidentally. I mean, you got. Yeah. It'd be hard to do it from behind as an accident, right? I mean, you're looking I right at it. It depends how how wet it is, you know. Else. Well, wow. yeah. I mean, did you so like it? Not like that. Right. Not with him. Wow. What an interesting story. See, that's when you became a comedian. When that's you what I call the baloney sneaky Pete. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Sneaky Pete, also another uh, hit show that our friend Jeff Ross is on, available oh, yeah. on uh, Amazon. Amazon. Yeah. Thank you, Tony, for all that. Of course. Um, so Don't bring up plugs in front of this girl, dude. 
My What's goodness. That? So what was the last straw, if you don't mind me asking? I actually did. Um, a girl contacted me, which it's not 100% that he's gay. That's just in my heart. But um, contacted me on face on Instagram and said that he, she was dating him for five and a half years, but it was not sexual. They had a very emotional relationship. Wow. <laughs> So now oh my god, you're my best friend. <laughs> wow. I love you. So we have this guy down for ten years of only really staying hard in butts. It's incredible. I feel sorry for you for going through that, but I also feel really sorry for him for having to like fake it. Yeah. That time. I feel bad too. No, he was a good I mean I thought he was a good guy, but then he had no remorse though, and in the end he was like it, it was a lot. Wow. You know what I mean? Do you so still talk to him? No. He's Mexican too? No. <laughs> oh, I was going to say, yeah, of course, because Mexicans have no problem going in and out of closets. Yeah. <laughs> or tunnels, dude. Call him El Chapo. <laughs> well, All right. <laughs> yeah. For what it's worth, I liked, how, I liked how personal your material was. It wasn't random jokes that anybody could tell. They were jokes about you and your life. I feel like they could be a little sharper. So I'd work on punching them up a little bit, but you're lovely and you're funny, and I hope comedy brings you the man that you deserve. Absolutely, and it, I'd say you got a lot of jokes out there. Great set, especially great. for only doing it one year. Really amazing. Come back, sign up again, and uh, let's find out more about you yes. next time. Lorraine Lopez, everybody. She's on Twitter, Lorraine Victoria Lopez. Lorraine with two R's, all one word. Like I did that day. I like her. God damn, this band is fucking killing it tonight. New songs every single episode. They're about to get lugged around the whole fucking country this week. Did you ever date a guy that you thought was gay? Very funny, Brian. There you go. Good one. Dude, you almost got him, Red Man. Good one. Red Man. All right, pull another name out. Put your hands together for Seth, everyone. Seth, one word. Seth, here he comes. Seth, 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 Seth. Yes. Woo! I one more like... time for Seth, everybody. All right. I feel like I'm a very non-threatening guy, you know? Like I could have a face tattoo and you'd still ask me for directions. No. The only time I ever felt threatening was when I was dating, uh, and I would drop the woman off at her house or apartment, you know, depending on how well she was doing in life, and she would immediately lock the door. <laughs> Disrespectful, you know? At least let me turn around, take a couple steps. Made me so mad. Every once in a while, I never did this, but every once in a while, I wanted to jiggle the handle, you know? Be like, ah! <laughs> Date's not over, you know? <laughs> Dinner was expensive, right? But I never did that. I never did that, you know. This might come as a shock to, uh, based on the way I look, but I've actually never raped anybody. So, <laughs> yeah. A lot of raping going on, and uh, I never have done any of it. So, <laughs> let that be known. Uh, I got married as a virgin. All right, perfect. We'll end there. There you go, Seth. You did it. Heck yeah. Woo. Seth, welcome back. You've hey. been on this show before, right? Yeah, yeah, Hell a couple yeah. times. Great. This was probably, you feel like this was the best set you've had on this show? Yeah, Absolutely. by far. I, th I think by so, far too. <laughs> yeah. I was just telling, uh, I was just telling uh, Curtis, the manager here, because we were talking about uh, about his brother made his debut uh, uh, doing stand-up on this show last night in Des Moines, Iowa, uh, and... Um, and I was telling him about how it's the, one of my favorite things about the show is when you see somebody and they don't kill their first time, you know, and they, yeah. they get, and you see them get better as they go. We've seen it a lot with the great Aphrodite over there, 62 years old, start 63, 63. started on this show, and uh, yeah. each time puts it together a little bit yeah. better. Um, so how's it going? How long have you been doing stand-up now? Uh, just over a year and a half. Over a now. year and a half. You have a yeah. lot of comedy background. You look like four out of the seven characters from The Office. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, most compared to Toby, unfortunately. <laughs> I've, ne- I've never watched the show. I just know what, uh, like, the broad. What a, uh, what a cheap cast comparison, looks like. then. Unbelievable. No, it worked. Uh, it worked. It, it, it worked. It and then dead on. I would have moved it on, but you wanted to stay there for a second. No, we can move on. It yeah. was dead on. Remind me of some of the things that we've talked about, we, uh, found out about you during your past interviews here. What are some of the more compelling things? Uh, that I am Mormon. That's one thing that's come up. Uh, uh-huh. um, yeah, I'm married. I have three kids. Uh, two of them children. have a bleeding disorder. Really? Yeah. What What's the bleeding disorder? It's called Glansman's. That's the common name for it. It's it's like hemophilia, right? Uh, mm-hmm. But a different cause. Same effect, different cause. S- where What do they bleed out of? Anywhere they get cut. Wherever uh, Wherever he hits them. Yeah. <laughs> they bruise really easily, so I can't hit any of my kids. So Aww. if they get if they get cut, they bleed a lot. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Their Their blood does not clot. Oh, so they have fuck. the platelets, but it doesn't. Can they, they just stick. carry around glue and stuff? Or is there some kind of thing like emergency? Yeah, I mean pace? we have we have special. Doctor medi- Red Band <laughs> here. Uh, <laughs> if they can't clot, you yeah. should be able to carry around. Hey, some you go. Here's yeah. some Elmas, you idiot. Good yeah. luck. We show them Bob the Builder, and then we. Uh, so Makes we sense. have special medication that we have on hand. <laughs> that was Bob the Builder, and oh, then that's uh, the Bob the Builder theme. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so we have special medication that we give them when they start to bleed uh-huh. for any reason. Uh, they typically have done it when they're younger and are teething and bite their tongue or their lip, oh, right? So Wow. wow. Yeah. Have you had it, any close calls, a lot of uh, bleed uh, outs? My son, we went to the ER twice when he was learning how to walk because he's an idiot, you know, and uh-huh. would fall and hit uh, his mouth all the time. Yeah. So we would uh. have to go to the ER. He got a blood transfusion when he was just over a year old. Yeah. Good uh, lord. You said one yeah. of them's a girl? Yes. I have two two daughters and one of them has glansmans. Yeah. And she's nine months old now. Oh. Could yeah, we're excited for the teenage years. Yeah. It's gonna was, be fun. I mean I was What happens when it? she has a period? That's, That's exactly what I was talking about. Yeah. Wow, I was this just is watching like a weird all of you <laughs> go for that fucking <laughs> dangling grape right there. <laughs> So uh, the yeah. audience was ahead of all of you, by the way. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> they were groaning at the wow, moment. Wow, when said. she becomes a grown up girl, she might uh, <laughs> maybe. Uh, yeah. Fucking really hit it out yeah. of the park. Any more of this, my ears are going to start uncontrollably bleeding. <laughs> <laughs> I have medication for you. Thank so, you. Uh, so, Seth, how's it going with the wife raising three kids? What are the ages again? Good. Uh, my oldest is seven, so it's seven, four, and then nine months seven, old. Seven, four, nine. What's yeah. mom do? Stay at home? No. What does she do? I stay at home, actually. Ooh, yeah. look at that. Daddy does Hey, best. women are the future, right? I guess You guys so. look at judging me. I don't work, so eat it, you All know? Right. Um, <laughs> You're a little bitch. So wh- <laughs> wh- wh- what is she? Yeah, she does very well for both what of us. What does she do? She teaches and does research out of the business school at USC. Oh, wow. Yeah. Really so cool. your daughter, like, when she becomes a teenager, like, yeah. what's going to happen? Like, she'll uh, probably find out how awesome it is to be a woman, and uh, our society will be better, right? So, ugh. I'm just trying to move on from the, you know, gross, dangling grape. Oh, I was too. I have no idea how we got back there. Baloney Pete is... Now, uh, now this grape, what is this grape that you're talking about? Concord? Concord grapes? It's Uh, a low-hanging fruit. (laughs) Oh, okay. (laughs) Yeah. So that's Can I tell you the worst thing I've ever done in my entire life? Yes, please Kay. do. Give us something to work with here. Yeah. Have, the, have uh, those fucking kids. I know. So this happened before I had kids. Uh-huh. I know. And they're all white, so a lot of people would be like, That's it. that is a terrible thing. Um, Let's get to it, Seth. What's the worst thing you've ever done? 17 years old. I was in Nauvoo, and I... Uh, What's Nauvoo? Is that an avatar world or something? What is that? What? Nauvoo is a little city. A little uh, city in Illinois. Oh, okay. In Illinois. Where? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Ugh. It was a. S- I was in college, and it was a study afar, right? So not quite abroad. Anyhow, the point is, is that the I, the oh guy from Aladdin? <laughs> okay. Very close. Very close. And you have a daughter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So got to know a guy in a, a wheelchair, a mechan- mechanized wheelchair, right? He had a live-in nurse, and I talked to him a few times. And one time at an activity at church, he came up and asked me to help him out. And I asked him with what. He brought over his live-in nurse and said, we need to go find a private room to talk. Uh It ended up that he had used his wheelchair to key a guy's truck because that guy had stolen his girlfriend. Uh And he needed to be punished. 
Uh-huh. That's a real Professor X situation. <laughs> yeah. So what did so you do? I, he asked me to lift him out of his wheelchair so that his live-in nurse could spank him with a wooden spoon. <laughs> and you did? I wanted to be a good person. Wow. Yeah. So you... I was 17, you know? I didn't you know what else to do. 17, you're holding a guy while he's getting spanked. Not while. Not oh. while. We found a room with a table... And so I just sort of flopped him, him on the table. Yep. yep. <laughs> Butt side up. <laughs> yep. Was it a ping pong table? No. Don't you, uh, don't you usually have to be at least 18 for something like that? I mean, deniability, right? Wow. So that's the worst thing I've ever done. Well, it's funny because uh, the worst thing I've ever done is let you tell that story. It's <laughs> uh, incredible. All right. <laughs> it's contagious. I wanted to give you something, but... No, I love it. But, Seth, you had a fun setup here. Hey, thanks, and man. And it was nice to meet you. It's fun to see, like I said earlier, people growing, getting better, still signing up and showing off uh, yeah. their new skills. There he goes, Thank Seth, you so everybody. Much. He's on Twitter, St. Lawrence 7. There he goes. Seth, everybody. How exciting. You guys having fun out there? How many of you? Uh, how many of you like it when comedians do good on this show? How many of you like it when comedians do bad on this show? Wow! Look at that. And uh, how, how many of you guys like middle of the road comedians? I love that the guy did bad the first time and still signed up and did it again. Yeah, that yep. shows a lot. Yeah, that's that's uh, that's. He rose. He rose like a phoenix. Exactly. Who's this guy with the pussy whip shirt? <laughs> What's going uh, on here? He's Tony? with uh, he's with uh, he's with Cassandra. I'm pretty sure Cassandra probably dressed him up like that. <laughs> yeah, it says pussy whipped on his shirt. That's Cass- that's Cassandra's. What, what what can what can we call him? Friend. Wow. It's someone's in. The, it's because someone someone might be in the doghouse after last week's episode, <laughs> huh? <laughs> I like that hat though. Hey, how many, <laughs> how many square footage is that doghouse? <laughs> the new Death Squad hat. <laughs> <laughs> Pull the name out of the bucket. Put your hands together for Jason Eckstein, everyone. Jason Eckstein Eckstein. Here he comes. Hey, you can dip 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 and live it in. Hey. What's up, guys? Of course I get called when I'm fucking wearing shorts. But it's hot as balls here. I don't know how you people do it. Monkeys shouldn't fucking live in the desert. What are you doing? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> Whoa. Uh, Tony, one thing you asked last time I was on here is other issues that I have. I have a little uh, ner- no <coughs> unknown neurological condition called narco- uh, narcolepsy and cataplexy. Cataplexy is like the fainting goats of the human world. People that have this will just black out if they laugh too hard. Not me, though. I guess I've just never experienced that kind of joy. (laughs) Uh, I also grew up in a cultish-like upbringing that I like to refer to as Mormon light. Yeah, that's what they are now, or would be. Much, Much more hardcore when I was a kid. They had the number two circus tent in the world that we used to get together in every year for a large gathering. Didn't occur to me that I was in a cult trying to jump ahead until uh, we moved. Wow, Jason, excellent. That ledge, my friend. Hey. Jason, 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 you signed up tonight. Yep. You signed your name on a piece of paper and then. Yeah, for both. And I was like, oh, I'll I'll change if I get you know, but Heck I didn't. Yeah. You've been on this show before? This is my third time, actually. Wow. Yeah. How's um, this r- how did this uh, rack up against your other two, do you think? Well, I kept going, at least. I mean, the la- last well, there you go. That means, seconds, they went, that means all three yeah. have gone bad. Yeah. That's good to know. Uh, <laughs> heck, yeah. I remember something about you, right? You're, I'm you a disabled veteran. I'm that's homeless. That's right. Yeah. Disabled veteran, homeless. But you're content with being homeless, right? Yeah, I got a van now. So I mean, Yeah, more. you got a van. That's a new thing. How about that? Yeah. That's, see, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, you were here when I was here last time. Weren't yeah. you here when I was here? That yeah. was my first time, my 56th time on a stage. Wow. I remember. I remember. Yeah. You've you made go. zero improvements. 
I think I am a lot more confident. I mean, it doesn't. This this is still pressure, and I yeah. I was you like got fucking, comedy chops. I was on. like, as soon as I fucking came in here with shorts, I'm like, I'm gonna get fucking pulled. What are you doing, Jason? Dude, it's not so. the shorts we're gonna make. Well, fun I know, of, bro. But it's what I was. Yeah, I had to address it. The, the shorts. You gotta be ready every time. Doesn't matter. Uh, I'm still ready. I feel like. I mean, it's. I I like the the pressure putting myself in that spot of being making it like harder on myself or whatever. Because I've only been doing it since October. So what does it fucking matter? It's good that you keep bouncing up no matter what. That's the important thing. Uh, that's my life. Wow, <laughs> Jesus! I love it. <laughs> fucking. You you do anything for fun over there, Van Wilder? Uh, well, I went back to to Indiana uh, to to forage mushrooms, but I mostly worked on the van, uh, edible mushrooms and shit. I, f- I forage those. I, I like survival shit and wilderness stuff more than city life. I so. love it. Growing mushrooms in uh, Indiana. <laughs> what was your job in the military? I was a mechanic. So I've w- yeah, I've worked on computers and, and engines and hydraulics and built hovercraft. I've done all kinds wow. of shit. Yeah. Wow, that's awesome. What branch of the military again? I was in the Coast Guard. Oh, that one. Yep. Um, it's raining, that's why I made fun of it first last time. Cause I love the Coast Guard. My grandfather was in the Coast yep. Guard. Uh, I'm hey. wearing his ring. Yeah. And now you're in the Rose Guard. The the Rose. Yeah. <laughs> Got it. Good one. Go one, Baloney. Baloney Pete. Um, so, uh, Jason, where did you uh, serve? Did you go overseas? No, I, uh, s- I was on a ship first uh, out of North Carolina, actually, um, Wilmington. And you ever heard of uh, Fayetteville before? Yep. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and then you, so you were stationed in Wilmington, that's it? And I was stationed in New Orleans. In wow, uh, Katrina, North Carolina and New Orleans, what a hero. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. I was in New Orleans. <laughs> oh my god! I, I can't believe he did uh, I was in New Orleans at an anti-terrorism unit, and we deployed to Guantanamo, and then we came back in '05. After that, and Katrina hit New Orleans. Wow, Guantanamo! So. Did you see anything crazy when you were at Guantanamo? Uh, we moved some people around and Marines and shit, but yeah. yeah. I heard they play your act to torture the inmates. This. <laughs> 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 This is always, to me, just like a wing it, like, I don't know. I like riffing more than I like trying to say good. my same You're shit You're all good. You're all good. You're just getting so. roasted, dude. Oh, no, I love it. Um, so, Jason, how did you become disabled? What happened? I, uh, I was in a boating accident, fucked my back up and hit my head, it bulged a couple discs and started having sci- sciatica issues and stuff like that. Wow. So. Wow. Have you ever gotten hit in the balls by a baseball and uh, <laughs> used that as an excuse for being gay? No, but I did get hit in the in the nuts by a, a military wad of like full roll of toilet paper, military shit. So wow. it's like that single ply, super hard, fucking scratches your asshole every time you wipe. Oh yeah. my god! Oh yeah, yeah. I I have you probably use it in your porta potties. I have yeah. no idea what mila, military <laughs> toilet paper is like, but it sounds amazing. Uh. I mean, it sounds like that'd be a good like first first approach. It ain't like no Charmin, start, I'll tell you that. Start with that, then one swipe of regular, and then perhaps a wet wipe. <laughs> you ever do that? A three-layer wipe? You live in a van, you wipe your ass properly? Oh, I, I have fucking portable wipes normally and shit. And Very yeah, cool. Fanny pack Where and, do you yeah. shit living in a van? In, in fucking places. Outside of the van. van. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let me, now I have to ask him again. Where do you shit? Like, where, do you have any places have that ju- you, you've lived in a van now and you've been homeless for a while? Clearly, it's outside of the van, but is there a special place that you found so that people don't see you? Or are you just right there in the middle of the fucking street outside of the van? I'm not fucking that kind of homeless. I have morals or something. I don't know. Like, Whoa, what? now you're enough. Or I just don't want everybody okay. to judge me. Admi- hey, initially. move your van! Yeah. <laughs> I'm just interested in uh, where you would shit, but... Uh, the gym, uh, fucking, ah. you know, nice places that are quiet or whatever. I don't know. You, f- you find them. Where do you tend to, uh, where do you tend to leave your van around Los Angeles? What's well, your, oh, Chroma Chris. I was just going to say he took a big old shit on the stage earlier, but. <laughs> <laughs> is there a, uh, is there a favorite place that you like to, uh, station your van at? Is there, you have, like, a pla- part of Los Angeles or, like, Rancho Cucamonga or something like that? I, I just got back in the <laughs> van. <laughs> Wait I, a did, I did eight weeks in my Prius when I first hey. came out here in October. Hey, don't Yes, that, Baloney so. Pete. Yeah, yeah, this is real important. Uh, it must be. <laughs> 
right after uh, he said that he took a dump on stage or whatever, uh, he leaned over and almost fell saying, I'm sorry I said that. <laughs> He's had a rough life. Didn't want to hurt his feelings. I haven't killed myself yet. It ain't going to happen then fucking with you guys. I'm sorry. I could tell some horrible shit there, but I'm not going to. Wait, what? What did you just say? All right. I had a friend commit suicide when I was a sophomore in high school. She hung herself in the restroom. <laughs> at, at. This guy's depressing as hell! Sometimes it's my favorite thing to do is to bring the mood down. No, you're doing why. good. You're doing good. Let's see how good. You're like, no. It's like reverse comedy. I love it. Let's fucking no. do it. It's killing. No. You guys like it, right? This I want to hear more of this story. This, this guy when looks I like Luigi if he never had Mario Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> when I was a sophomore in high school, there was a girl that I, I had a crush on her, too. We were in JRTC together uh, and homeroom, but she hung herself sophomore year in the restroom at the school. Okay, hold on, was it before on. or after you asked her to homecoming? I, oh, I my did. God. <laughs> She just broke up with her boy long-term oh. boyfriend like the week before, so I hadn't worked up the nerves yet. You, know, you were like, hey, you want to hang out? Fuck. <laughs> 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 what did you say? Oh, my God. Joel Berg. Good Lord. Wow. So you had a crush on her. She hung herself. Then what? That's it? Is that the whole story? I mean, I, I, I w that was back when I, yeah, I had no balls. Uh, so you're know. not well hung. <laughs> oh, no. Um, My goodness. I don't know if I'm red band level there. How did you, how did you, how did you, how did you get her down or did she fall in love with you? No, I never, I never worked up the nerves to even tell her that I like had a crush on her or anything. Wow, like that. just yeah. think it if was like you, if you would have told her that, maybe she would have hung herself earlier. <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't have left her hanging. <laughs> Heck yeah! <laughs> My goodness, you took her breath away. <laughs> 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 Wow, did that uh, that that affected you a lot as a as yeah? A of course, so I didn't yeah. go yeah, but I would never kill myself. So when I got depressed, when I fucked myself at tw up at twenty three, uh -huh. yeah, when I had sex with myself, guys, my yeah, <laughs> uh, my, my dick's a fucking <laughs> circle. I don't know. <laughs> um, <laughs> there we go. Yeah, um, <laughs> I did. I I I got addicted to painkillers and all kinds of shit. Because I, I was anti-drug. That's why I went in the Coast Guard. So when they start throwing all that shit at me and, the, and I believe the white coats tell me, oh, you take this and you'll be better or whatever and shit and sending me down seven medications fucking path or whatever. Uh, yeah. But now I, you're clean. I didn't kill myself. Now you're not on yeah. painkillers. You don't want to kill yourself. You found something that you weed, love to do. You smoke weed. <laughs> but uh, okay. But 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 you call uh, doctors the white coats now? <laughs> <laughs> Is that right? Was that right? It was just what I said in the moment. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. so well, uh, I could tell you some shit. About get that. your shots. Do you have a job? I don't know if I got that part. Or you get you get to you get some get things set to you, sent to you from uh, disability or something like that. Yeah, I'm suing the government there right now. Wow, how's that going make for up you? Make for the the ignorance of my past of like getting out and not. <laughs> figuring that shit out wow well uh good luck with that uh, stick with the stand-up i love how i love uh i love how happy and uh content you are you know uh, there's a lot of great comics that have lived in cars i lived in mine for a little while a long time ago and uh a lot of uh, great ones still do malcolm hatchet so you know if you buckle down and you write and you keep going up as much one as day you, you can, can be living in my car who knows <laughs> You did 120 mics in March, and you said that not into the microphone. Ladies and gentlemen, Jason Eckstein, everyone. Come on. Goddamn American hero. You got it. National Guard. 
do see God me American again. Hero just ran into the camera. I would Good understand. Job. I would understand. <laughs> the girl he liked in uh, sophomore year stepped off that ledge, my friend. <laughs> Makes sense. Comes full circle, much like the noose that was around. Okay. Uh... Put another name out of the bucket. You guys having fun out there, huh? Good old All-American yes. fun. Yes. I'm say, having fun. We say no one has more fun on Mondays than us. I uh, pulled another name out. This looks like a new name. Make some noise for Nico Jaffe. Nico Jaffe. J-A-F-F-E. Nico Jaffe, make us laughy. Yeah. Nico. Here Nico, he Nico. Nico Jaffe, everybody. Nico, please. What's up, everybody? What's up, everybody? Uh, I'm Jewish. I um, like to start with that because, you know, look like I hate him. Um, <laughs> so. But a uh, white dude wouldn't trade it for the world. Turns out it's pretty sweet. Um, uh, yeah, I got white privilege, uh, and I know it. Uh, some of my buddies, I feel like, don't, though. Like, the other day, I was talking to a friend, and he was like, man, Nico, aren't you glad weed's legal? I was like, dude, we're white. It's always been legal. <laughs> you gonna let me hit that, or I got minor problems I want to avoid? So how was lacrosse? Um, <laughs> I'm going through a breakup. Breakups are weird, right? Uh, a lot like getting out of prison. Um, because at first the freedom's nice, and then you start to miss the sex. So, you know. Cool. Yeah! Hell yeah. Welcome to the show, Nico. First Thanks. time? Uh, yeah, yeah first yeah. time on Keltoni. I love Second it. time here. Second time at the comedy store. Yeah. Where are you from? Uh, Claremont. Claremont. So, not in L.A. either. Right. Uh, Thank you. How long have you been hosting Legion of Skanks? <laughs> <laughs> it's a part-time gig, so a couple months. Cool. Heck yeah. Uh, so, Nico, welcome to the show. You Thanks. were in prison? <laughs> no, 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 no. Auschwitz? Uh, I still live with my parents, though, so. <laughs> he said he was Jewish. It's true. It's true. You li still live with your parents? Yeah. Well, wow. I'm 23. 23. So just graduated college. Going to yeah. law school next year. 23. You don't look a yeah. day over Vin Diesel. I know. <laughs> <laughs> law school, huh? Yeah. That's law school. What do, you, what do you think you're going to be? Uh, <laughs> well, what's your well, specialty going to be? Well, uh, I'm going to study cannabis law, actually. Um, wow. Look at that. So, yeah. I think it's passed to the left, I think, is the <laughs> law. And, <laughs> and uh, don't, bogart, don't bogart the weed. <laughs> Uh, and, uh, do you think now is a good time to get into cannabis law now that it's legal? Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if well, I were you, I would get into mushrooms you know. <laughs> law or any other drug law. Coke uh, law. Because there's still laws. You know, I'm hoping we'll, we'll work our way there. Really, what's happening is uh, my parents are making me go to law school. Uh -huh. And I just decided that's probably the easiest thing to study there. Right. Yeah. Well, that's... That's yeah, because the test will be like, you know, is weed legal? Don't sound and like you'll that. be like, yeah. <laughs> and they're like, you're a lawyer now. <laughs> I'm hoping. Yeah. I'm hoping. Uh, you know. There's always a job for you on the side if you ever need one. Appreciate it. That's it, right? You pass the you bar. You think you're going to follow through with law school? I'm not so sure. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, <laughs> my parents said uh, if I go, they'll pay for my apartment. And so I'm just going to do stand-up while I'm there. And like, what, I got to like read a couple books or something? Like, it'll be chill. Oh, so yeah. Yeah, drain dude. their bank account. <laughs> <laughs> what do your parents do? They can They're rent you an apartment for $1,500 a month instead of spending 400000 on law school if you don't want to go. I got a merit scholarship. Oh, so. okay. Yeah. Oh, oh wow. fuck it. Look at you. So. Jesus. That shaped some of the money off, huh? Yeah, a pretty significant chunk. Right. So. Uh, what are your I got it. There you go. <laughs> I mean, Very good. I you like are you are the most Mexican-looking Jewish person I have ever seen. Is that true? You're Jewish? Yeah. No, straight up. Yeah, yeah. Straight up Jewish. Yeah. Fuck yeah. yeah. Cool. Are you fucking building pyramids? <laughs> All right, Brian. 
Uh, what are your uh, What are your Of course he's Jewish. Yeah. He looks like an uncircumcised penis. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> my parents are both attorneys too. So ah, I had yeah. a feeling. What kind of law do they study? Uh, they do real estate law. Real estate laws. Yeah. That confirms it. You're Jewish. <laughs> If, if you feed this guy after midnight, he turns into Jeff Ross. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. You ever go to temple or anything like that? You practice? Uh, uh, <laughs> I used to go to meet girls. How does, how does the yarmulke stay on your head? Uh, <laughs> Uh, same thing that stops kids who don't bleed. You just throw some Elmer's on it and it sticks. Oh, I see what you did there. It's a little callback. It's a callback. <laughs> it's a callback. That's a sold company. <laughs> but uh, what, was I, what was I saying? Um, Talking about what? Uh, real estate law or something? Yeah, they do real estate law and I'm Jewish. And what, I mean. <laughs> okay. what do you, uh, you're 23? 23. What do you yeah, do for fun? And what, are 20, what are 23 year olds uh, doing for fun nowadays? I <laughs> 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 hate that. <laughs> You hate that? Do you really hate that? Don't yeah. be honest. Me, it was him. He hate it, I hate it. Because you constantly <laughs> like what? Do you hey. do that all the time in real life? Sometimes, yeah. All right. It's just like a quarter. Jeez, Red Band, just don't be friends with them in real life. I won't. <laughs> <laughs> are you going to do that when we're hanging out later? What are you doing, man? Quit laughing like that, man. We're going to take you out for dinner after this. You're ruining your chances with me. <laughs> Hashtag me like poop fart. So you laughed a lot. I'm excited to hear the answer. What you like to do for fun? Any hobbies or anything? Uh, like? I hang out with my girlfriend a lot. So just wherever she wants to go, because that's don't have a lot of free time. So yeah, uh, is she going to law school too? Um, maybe I don't know. We'll so see. you just follow her she's, around. She's in grad school. So. If you keep following her around, you're gonna end up like that guy with the dumb hat in the, <laughs> the second row. <laughs> <laughs> His head is down. This guy don't got no dick. Available now at shopsquad.com. This guy, Cole Alexander, got in big trouble this past week. Um, Is your girlfriend supportive of you being a comedian? Uh, Sometimes. Um, (laughs) Sometimes. Uh, Anytime I get paid for a show, because some of the bits are about her, she makes me give her half. So so she's Jewish, too. (laughs) Joel Berg. Wow, that's really true. Uh, she tries, but it's right. <laughs> but I don't let her. Right. Right. Yeah. Then, then you give her the full hundred percent. You know what I'm saying? Whoa, Come baloney on. Pete. Oh my goodness. Wow, look at this horny Atlantis <laughs> Morissette over here. It's going crazy right now. You wanna know? <laughs> Wow. Where'd you meet your girlfriend at? College. 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 Heck yeah. yeah. I love it. Small I love little it. liberal arts college. Is she still in college? Uh, she's going to go to grad school, so she graduated. Is she here? Too. No, she's not. Oh. She's in Dallas for an internship. Uh, hopefully being faithful, am I right? Yeah. Uh, probably not. <laughs> she's probably with the Dallas Cowboys right now, just getting <laughs> fucking... <laughs> no, wait. I just got to ask. I've never heard am I right used in that context before. <laughs> Like, I hope my girlfriend's not cheating on me, am I right? <laughs> like, what did you mean by that? Because, like, even for baloney pee, that was weird, man. I love it. I love it. I love it, Nico. Well, um, this was, uh, how long did I went stand-up again? Eight months. Eight months. Yeah. Very fun, man. Well, it was nice to meet you. A lot of fun during the interview. A lot of fun on stage. Congratulations. Come back again. Nico Jaffe, everybody. Heck yeah. I know that if I ever need a good weed lawyer, I'm going to that guy. I like that he's not following the parents' plan. He's going to law school, to, but he's also trying it, his, his adventure of comedy. That's great. Yeah, how about one more time for him? Nico Jaffe, everyone. I love it. You know, we have a regular on this show who performs a brand new uh, minute every single week. And before we bring him up, I want to tell you about People's Choice Beef Jerky, L.A.'s original small batch beef jerky. (laughs) People's Choice Beef Jerky is a family business from California that's been making quality jerky for over 85 years. Unlike mass-produced beef jerky, People's Choice Beef Jerky is marinated, sliced, and cooked by hand. 
That's right, People's Choice Beef Jerky is handmade in small batches. And I want to tell you about their newest release, the Nashville Hot. Actually, let me tell you about it. Yeah. If you like spicy foods, you'll love Nashville Hot. The Nashville Hot is made with thick cuts of 100% USA beef cooked with cayenne pepper, chili powder, garlic powder, and smoked paprika. It is slow cooked, creating a flavor profile that is spicy and satisfying. And this is authentic craft jerky. Whole pieces, thick cut, chewy steak-like texture, not that soft stuff that you could actually taste the meat. You know that? Yep. They sent us some uh, this weekend, and we ate it. It's fucking hot as fuck. It's great if you like hot foods. Wow, there you go. Two F words for your improvisational part. Very good. Beef jerky is great for staying healthy. It's a high-energy snack loaded with protein. So go to peopleschoicebeefjerky.com. They have a diverse line of products and flavors, and if you use the promo code TONYHOT, you're going to get 20% off your order of the Nashville Hot Beef Jerky. So once more, that's peopleschoicebeefjerky.com, and use promo code TONYHOT. For 20% off your order of the Nashville Hot Beef Jerky. You guys ready to get back into the show or what? We have a regular on this show. He writes and performs a brand new 60 seconds every single week. You know him. You love him. He's got a wild, wild, fun, creative energy and improvisational skill. Put your hands together for the great William Montgomery, everybody. I like the crazy folks. Come on, people, make some fucking noise! So I'm, uh, I'm gonna set a scene. Uh, Tim Tebow is still playing in the NFL. I uh, found myself doing a Tebow the other night. I wasn't kneeling down in prayer, but to do the cocaine off the table. <laughs> so I have a website, it's called Streaming Diamonds. It's a lot like Netflix, but we just have earnest movies. Box, but fucking bring them back. It's an impression of me when I lived in the Philippines. Uh, <laughs> don't be alarmed at the color of my skin. I'm not going to be robbing any of y'all tonight. That's not a black joke. It's a Filipino joke. I don't know if y'all have ever been to the Philippines before. It's a nightmare. I'm doing 30 minutes tonight, Red Band, what do I... <laughs> William Montgomery. Okay. It's exciting to uh, be up here. Jeff Ross and I were in the uh, Flipper uh, remix about the Dolphin. Wow. Uh, you know, William, that seems like a pretty blatant lie. Uh, we have Flipper Remix. Are you talking about a remake of a movie or a remix like a song of a TV show? Flipper 2. I don't know if y'all remember uh, uh, Mambo Number 5. <laughs> His cousin actually is the director, Lou Bega. My goodness. It's all true. I know, because <laughs> it was so weird. I love it. Wow. What was it like being on set with, uh, with Jeff Ross? And, uh, it Jeff? was weird. I just remember a couple afternoons. The guy was just fucking give it. We were like, we're hungry. What are you going to give us? He was giving us almond joys. We were like, why are you doing that? He's like, we're in the fucking Philippines. And what did you say? I was like, let's fucking get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> My goodness. It was a nightmare. We were down there, what, two years, three years? It's almost, it's almost four years. Almost four years. <laughs> it felt like four years. I couldn't believe it. I mean, I got malaria. Yeah, what was that like when you got malaria? What do you remember? What were your symptoms? No, that was the chick you fucked. <laughs> malaria Martinez. I don't know if y'all have ever been to the Philippines. They oh, she's been on the show. look like Asian time. people, but they have Hispanic names. That's so weird, isn't it? <laughs> weird thing. <laughs> Remember really? when we worked together at the, uh, what's your shirt say? Uh, right. Laser Quest Arena. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. The Laser Park. That was a fun year. It was so weird. I, we, we opened up some uh, arenas down in the Philippines. Uh, one of the last weeks we were there, some guy was in front of the smoke machine, a tad too long, died. I was like, Jeff, what are we going to do? I don't have insurance. 
So what did you what did you say when he asked you what do you I just told him that he was going to be okay and that whatever happens in life we're in it together. And I appreciated that. All right. <laughs> Thanks William. Y'all should have seen it. We actually did some other movie it was called uh uh Free Willy 2. It was based on Jeff and I planning the pipe bombs underneath the bleachers 96 Olympics. <laughs> I don't know if y'all remember that, but one of the great scenes, MIA Paper Planes is playing. Uh, we paid a lot of money for the rights to that song. It was insane. And one of just my favorite scenes, we're both booking it after we ignite the fuse under the bleachers. <laughs> you were and a little quicker than me. I know. And I look back and I'm like, Jeff, why are you wearing fucking flip flops? I told you to put on the aqua socks. We had been in a lake earlier. Let's give it up for the South, y'all. Wow. Great to see you, buddy. I had no idea you guys had this entire history. Uh, This is all new to me. We go way back to uh, the first Gulf War. Wow. I was actually in a tank. I don't know if y'all have ever uh, been a tank captain, but let's just say drink your Gatorade. I got so dehydrated in that. You were a tank captain in the first Gulf War? I was. It was weird. I used to wear a bandana. William, how old are you? <laughs> how, how old are you, William? I'm uh, 43. <laughs> wow. You look great. Thank you so much. Yeah, I eat, uh, eat vitamins, drink prune juice. Yeah. Uh, Read the newspaper every day. I don't know if y'all remember, uh, remember Play-Doh. I eat Play-Doh. So I'm kidding. Hey, uh, remember that time we got drunk in Philadelphia with the airplane pilot and the stewardess? I couldn't believe it. We ended up in the fucking <laughs> cockpit. We both had pipe bombs. I was like, Jeff, is this the flight? We're going to fly into a fucking building. And what would you say? I said, we got to get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Bye now. <laughs> fuck yes. It was a nightmare. I was on edge. Just those two pipe bombs. We somehow made it through airport security. What happened when that lady frisked you? I started, I started getting ticklish. <laughs> I don't know if y'all have ever seen Jeff laugh, but it is a... <laughs> William, uh, clearly you are, uh, you're having a lot of fun. Uh, very exciting. Um, we know that uh, you know, a lot of people around the entire world know of you now from this show. A lot of people, a lot of people love you. Uh, when we're out there on the road, so many people say that they wish you were there and everything. Uh, but with, with great, uh, with great, especially, you know, take it from, uh, take it from Red Band and I, with, uh, with a bit of internet fame comes a lot of haters, and we know that, uh, you've had some of those recently. Is there any, uh, ch- internet trolls that perhaps you'd like to call out right now that have been Yeah, I'm glad you, you asked me that. Yeah. There is, <laughs> there are now probably three Cracker Barrel 55 people. One of them sent me a picture of my parents' house the other night. <laughs> I sent a picture yeah of your parents house I was like what is that 249 St. Andrew's Fair what, how did you how did you get there you think maybe it might be your parents have you ever thought about that ooh that, yeah we've met the Montgomery's they've been on this show Larry uh, is it you <laughs> wow well, William, you are so much goddamn fun. Uh, we need to get you... Uh, okay. Thank you so much. It was fun. We need to figure out a way to get you out of that goddamn self-storage unit job that keeps you here in Los Angeles all the time. And I'll be honest. I Last thing I'll say, literally today I befriended uh, two old guys at the self-storage unit place, some motherfucker named Paul who I befriended, my, uh, my manager Dominic wasn't in, uh, neither was Chris, my other manager. I don't think you should be naming your manager's names on this show. <laughs> or giving out your home address. <laughs> yeah. That was... <laughs> <laughs> so what, what happened? 
seriously, I mean, I didn't want to bring this up, but <laughs> Paul was talking shit today, and it hurt my feelings. I went across the street to the, yeah, it was a nightmare. Well, you know what, William? Maybe, uh, maybe, maybe one day Paul will lo be looking back. He'll find out that you were on this show, and he'll go back, and he'll wa find this episode. Why don't you uh, look at that camera right down the middle there and tell Paul what you thought of his actions today? Hey, Paul, I get it. Uh, you have that bad cough. You're 74. Look pretty good. You wear that Yankees hat a bunch. Uh, you're worried about your cough you have. I am as well. I think you're dying. <laughs> so today when you were talking shit, I, I sucked it up because I just prayed to God. You were having fun. It just sort of gave you one last sort of nice memory in life. I was sitting behind the computer. I was playing solitaire. I don't know if you all played spider solitaire, but just wanting to cry. Just wanting to cry. It was a nightmare. William, quick question for you. Is, is that your parents' house right there on this, uh, on this screen? <laughs> Okie dokie. Uh, <laughs> all right. There he goes. William Montgomery, everybody. Come on, people. That's a real goddamn artist right there. William Montgomery. God, that's not his parents' yeah, house. Yeah, thank that's, goodness uh, it's not his actual like parents' house. That's, that was a close call. Yeah. Uh, you guys think we should go back to this bucket one more time? <laughs> By the way, shout out to, uh, shout out to our friend uh, from Kansas, Trey Thompson, who actually made this bucket for us a few days ago with his uh, art uh, teacher girlfriend, and we took it from... Uh, Lawrence, Kansas, to Des Moines, to Omaha, and it ended up somehow in my fucking suitcase today. And since it did, I figured, why not use it uh, during this? Yeah. Uh, and all episode. the and all the people that made buckets, like yeah. some cities, we had like three buckets, it's man. True. Thank you for it's all that. We'll sign them if you guys. It's bring so it. cool. Yeah, if you bring a bucket on the road at the end of the episode, we'll sign it for you and give it to you so that you have a little souvenir. It's a look cool how thing. cool this one is. It's got all your tour dates. Yeah, on the it's back. really fun. Um, and it's you know it stays uh, the paint stays on. It. A Congrats, lot of Tony. You got a cool thing going. A here, lot of man. these buckets fall apart by the end of the episode, but not this one. Durable, sturdy, fucking American made bucket. Well built. It's fun because for a lot of comics, this show is on their bucket list. It's true. That is true. Uh, I pulled a name out. Put your hands together for uh, Danny Carranza, everybody. <laughs> Danny Carranza. Here comes Danny Carranza, everybody. Hello, everyone. Um, old people tend to give me the same expression that I think that they give a shooting star uh, whenever they see me in public. Um, let's see. Well, my roommate, um, he actually made me think that Jesus was probably a magician. Um, because one time he couldn't make rent and he actually asked me for the money uh, and I said uh, no 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 such thing I would never do do that and he and I told him well, what was gonna be your solution instead and he said well actually I'm just gonna pray and I said what and he said yeah dude um, every time I need something um, and like I can't get it I just go to my room and I just pray and that's it and I'm like, so you don't actually, I don't know, step up and get a fucking job? And he's like, no, no, I just pray and it'll come true. And uh, yeah, that made me think, I can't believe there's actually people that survive like that. Um, it's pretty scary. All right, Danny Carranza, everybody with a new minute of stand up. Hello. Danny Carranza, clearly the newest redrawn Sonic the Hedgehog. Uh, <laughs> yeah, character. looks wave. Where? Incredible. Uh, I was going to say, what happened to Russell Peters, man? <laughs> <laughs> Danny, take a step this way so that you face the audience. There when you, you mentioned that shooting star, I thought you were talking about Tito or da uh, Big Poppy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I love you heard that. about that? That was yeah, sad. Yeah, it's crazy. Really hey, sad. did you wash your hair with your laundry again? <laughs> It is an incredible look, Danny. Are, is it true that you're from Rancho Blue Camunga? No, it's not. Joel <laughs> Turd. Whoa, look at that. Oh, okay. I see how it is. Uh, 
Wow. I mean, you are uh, you are quite the... Uh, I feel like I know you from somewhere. I, I don't the Smurf, you, the I Smurfs? You, um, when, I, when I first moved out here... Police lineup? I, I first moved out here a couple years ago. I told you that... Um, you look like I a said, character that he would play. <laughs> <laughs> I, said, I said, fuck it. I don't want to live in this shithole in North Carolina anymore, and I want to come to L.A. And uh, so, yeah, so like in a day and a half, no sleep, no food. I just came here with my dog, and I was homeless for like three months. Uh-huh. Um yeah, and I would just basically just spend it all the time just hanging out at the beach um, wow. <laughs> and, like, taking my dog to dog beaches, hiking with him. And then I came to see you because I told you that, like, Kill Tony is, like, everything for me. Wow. Um, yeah. And so I've been wanting to be a comedian, but it's been so goddamn hard. Like, there's been so many things going wrong. Um, and just recently, shit's been great. And two weeks ago, Joel, like, like, lit my ass on fire to be a fucking comedian and do it now and not have to wait to kill Tony to for the first time to get up. So fucking cool. Uh, so how long have you been in L.A.? When did you make um, that move? Like two years I've been back. Two yeah. years. Uh, let's check in with Baloney Pete for just a second. Yeah, yeah. Uh, is your dog funnier than you? <laughs> I hope so because I just found out uh, he m- might have died, but I think he's just being like kidnapped. Wait, 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 yeah. wait, 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 wait. You sort of you sort of stopped projecting halfway through that. You <laughs> just you said I just found out that he might have died and what? Um. Or like like the guy that I gave him to to like take care of uh-huh. like I don't think he wants to give him back. I yeah. think that's a situation. Wow! How yeah. long ago did you give him your dog? In October, I had to move out of the place that I was staying at. And yeah, um, your dog's dead, man. That, that's what I, I mean. I kind of I kind of like don't know whether I should like face those feelings. When's the last time you checked in with uh, <laughs> with the dog owner? Um, like literally, I just I think I think the last time he talked to me was like a month after October. And so November. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, how how old how old is the dog? Three. Three, Three years, years old. old. So, so and how do you say it died? Huh? How do you say it died? He said that he uh, ran into the backyard, went into the neighbor's yard, ate something, and then uh, like he he took him to the vet because he got sick. And he had to pay like three thousand dollars, and then he died. And like I had to get the cops to get him to on, on the phone because he wouldn't, you know, outright tell me. No, he, he wouldn't ex- like answer my calls, my messages, nothing for months. Wow. Yeah. And then I'm like, what fuck, I don't know. I don't know how to feel. I don't know whether to like accept it because like I said, this dog was like everything. When what I was the dog's name? Stitch. Stitch. Well, yeah. stitches get stitches. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What was the cop? What did the cops say when you were like, they, hey, they were the you ones call that were this like, fucking this random ass sound dude right. and, and ask me if my dog is around? I mean, I didn't, I didn't know what to do next. LAPD like, was, I was like, I don't know how to tell you this, man, but we don't have time for this at all. <laughs> <laughs> they have plenty the of time, dog's dead. Actually. Move on. <laughs> People <laughs> are killing each other downtown. We got riots going on. All right. Have a nice day, buddy. He called the police. He's like, yes, men in blue, me too. Uh... <laughs> Look at you. Hey, how long have you had your hair dyed like that? Um, uh, like over a year. Wow. Look yeah. at that. Yeah. Was you, okay. Let me give us, give us, it's been Maybe two years. Maybe the dog committed suicide. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Sounds like it. You see, That's a tough one, man. That's yeah, a tough yeah, yeah, one. Yeah, man. He was a, he was I feel your dog. pain. He I feel your everything. pain. You know what? Yeah. You should work it out and write some jokes about that. That'd be um, a I good yeah. therapy. Yeah. I just started like two weeks ago, like I said. So. You started truly started stand-up two weeks ago. Yeah, literally two weeks ago. I was here in this Kill Tony, and uh-huh. I, was, I signed up for the first time. I didn't even know you had to go over that side right. to sit down. Well, where were and, you? And, um, over here, like in the front. Oh. Yeah, you see oh. me all the time. Oh, like, okay. Sure. Yeah. Gotcha. And... Um, I talked to Joel, like, finally, because I adore all you guys. Right, right, right. Yeah, we heard that part. So you got here two years ago, and you said a lot of stuff was going bad. Uh, you were homeless. Uh, yeah. And then now you said lately stuff's been going good. Can yeah. you give us some examples of the good stuff? That so I finally uh, got a good job, you know, worked Wh- for Amazon. And, oh, wow, um, great. Yeah. And, yeah. like, You're- I, I work six days a week, you know, like, not because I have to. I just – I only have to work four days, but mm-hmm. I just – want to fucking hustle yeah yeah you're mexican and then i go out for open i go out for uh open mics like three or four times every every you know every day um i guess i've been up like five times uh, in the past two weeks like each week wow so, look yeah. at you it's amazing the time that you can create to work and chase hobbies when you abandon your dog <laughs> yeah really uh, i kind of think about it i'm like fuck like if i had a dog i couldn't really be out here look i mean you gotta get a new dog bro yeah. Um, no, nah, I think I want to get a girlfriend first. So hey, like two, look years, at that. Hey, bitches like of bitches. Yeah. yeah. I love that. Have you ever thought about ordering one off Amazon? <laughs> mm, 
not yet. They're, they're, <laughs> not, they're not that advanced yet. You got right. a job at Amazon? What kind of job? A delivery. Delivery job. Mm-hmm. Are you part of the new drone program? Because <laughs> your act kind of droned on. That was fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's exci- it was fun. It's exciting, man. So when did, when, when did you and I have that talk? What killed so me? So, uh, fuck. Um... I don't remember exactly what episode it might have been. Right, um, right. I, I, I think, mean, I'm talking about I think about it was like around when. Jeff Ross, like around that time. I think. I Dude, think he's I saw been him on a f- quite a I few times. I know that's what I'm saying, like, like two years ago. Oh, two years yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah. Okay, very cool, man. That's interesting. He looks like a genie who gives three wishes at a hookah lounge. <laughs> 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 oh, my God. All right, you're giving me the blues. Yeah. Sorry. You are, uh, you are, uh, you are as, uh, for a guy this blue, you are extremely green. You just started uh, writing and working at it two weeks ago, but it sounds like you have uh, a work ethic. How old are you? Uh, 25. 25 years old. So, you know, I'm telling you, you have all Uh, the chances that just any comedian, any of these people with their name on the wall, you have the same uh, chance that they had when they were I mean, I feel like I have the same origin, the whole shitty childhood, depression, living in my car. Yeah, it's true. Fired from every job I've ever had. I was like, fuck it, I got it. Yeah. He's blue without a D-Baba dog. (laughs) 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 I love it. He's... I think he said he's blue. What was it again? Without a D-Baba dog. I said he's blue without a D-Baba D-Baba dog. He's blue without a D-Baba dog. Without a D-Baba dog. Without a D-Baba dog. And what's up? We actually have a, a special treat for you, uh, we, Danny. We actually have on the phone right now, we are talking live with Stitches right now. Uh, <laughs> Stitches, is, just is, Stitch, is, just is, Stitch. Is there, is there anything that you'd like to say to, uh, to Stitches? Yeah, man. Uh, I just want to know that you know, he got me where I am now. Like, wow. without him, I wouldn't. <laughs> hey, can I, I personify the dog for a second? It wasn't worth it. Why'd you let me die? (laughs) (laughs) How about one more time? Good and loud for Danny Carranza, huh? You know what? Why don't we do something special? Since it is, what, Pride Month, since her, uh, the uh, man formerly known as perhaps Boyfriend uh, had a uh, one-sided conversation about her on stage last week while she wasn't here, since she made cookies and is dressed adorably as a gigantic vagina, let's do something fun. And uh, she's been on the show a few times. Uh, we love her. She started here and uh, she tries, she tries, she works hard at it. Ladies and gentlemen, a spot for Cassandra Cass, everybody. Let's do it. Why not? Here she comes. Come on, your final comedian of the night. Let's see how loud this place can get. Cassandra Cass, everybody. Hi, my name is Cassandra Cass. You might have seen me or heard about me or even whispered about me. I want to introduce you all to my vagina. But I'll tell you, don't get too close because the two former comedians who have have bombed on Kill Tony. I've recently been dating a comedian, yes. And the hardest thing is to actually pretend like he's funnier than me. (laughs) And I will say, every time we go out, I have to pick up the check because he never has any money. And we all know my pussy's expensive. That's all I got. I'm hot as hell. Wow, <laughs> look at that. Sorry. Owning it down there at the end. <laughs> wow. Nice that pussy. Interesting. <laughs> Cassandra Cass. Yes. Look at you. This is a... Uh, this is, this is a... A angry pussy. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Uh, that's amazing. Like, like, uh, did did you, you make that? I did. Wow. Yeah, so that's, that's what I do. I do burlesque shows. I travel all over the world. And uh, I've done it for 20 years. And I'm damn good at it. You are. So, yeah, damn right. Absolutely. Thank you. Cassandra, uh, so um, this is exciting. Have you been having fun with life? You've been doing stand up anywhere else? Or uh, yeah, I, I actually uh, got the honor of, uh, you know, David Arquette wrestles. 
And he's an amazing human being, and yes. he invited me to... Great be- friend of the Kill Tony show. Yeah, he's a wonderful time I'm guest. wrestling with my sexuality right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, b- well, baby, don't make me lift this up. Whoa. You might really get there. Wow. Ooh, right? That. My goodness. Nice I th- balls! <laughs> <laughs> Cassandra. Yes, sir. Oh, you lost yes, your wig. Your, your wig fell off. <laughs> oh, it's, it's okay. You, I you guess I'm a bald pussy now. I think I think we finally found where the clit is. Uh, oh my god! Should I? Put <laughs> it's no, beautiful look. either way, Cassandra. It's yeah, all thank good. You. you look. That's like a I Afro whitey. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Aphrodite. So yeah. Wh- so. Were, so. Oh boy, I don't know. No, go ahead, Jeff. <laughs> I'm still shocked from when you lifted up the uh, outfit. You you were? I think maybe you need this. <laughs> I, I've already done that, baby. Oh, okay. Yeah, I've already done the sword. Yeah, she's already chopped everything off. Yeah. You said that. Uh, you said that. Uh, you uh, you pick up the check. Is that true? This guy. Uh. Well, oh. he, you know. I He's a poor little bitch. <laughs> you know. I was a little dis. I was really disappointed in Cole last week. Wow. I mean, I really, really was. The way he made it sound was like he comes over to my house and he, you know, we bang like rabbits, and that's not that's not true. What what is okay? Is there is there a side of the story that you'd like to? Hear? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I came out of a horrible relationship, and for nine months I've been single. I've just been you know talking to people. I met Cole, and he was very kind and very nice, and we hit it off. Yeah, and. Uh, I did not fuck him. Sure, we've had sex, but uh, that's just recently. <laughs> Wait. Right? But I wasn't, and you're, you know, I was very, very disappointed. Very disappointed how he made me sound. You know, he actually told me in the car yesterday that he loved me. Whoa. Wh- what, did you t- what did you respond with? I said, that's sweet. <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm. This dude's a gay I, little bitch. <laughs> But uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. You know, I'm just, I'm just enjoying life. I love that. Do you guys go on? Uh, you, but you guys do go on dates. Yeah, we've been out and about. I mean, we went to uh, where did we go to? What was that? Cabo Wabo, I guess. Uh huh. And did you pick up the check there? No, he pay, he he paid. Oh wow! But you like to leave the tip, right? <laughs> well. I'm not against it, but let me just tell you, when you've had a penis, you definitely know how to please the penis. Let's keep that straight. Yeah, let me ask you a question. You saw the show earlier Whoa, with the, uh, with the only young... Whoa, when the roast beef beef. <laughs> My goodness. You saw the show earlier with Lorraine Lopez talking about her ex-boyfriend. Uh, yeah. What, do you th- what, what was your analysis of that situation? You, uh, uh, you know a lot about that. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it was like, I felt sorry for her, but I thought like, Come on, five years with no dick. I mean, yeah. wake up. I'm sorry, sister. You're beautiful. You're stunning. You're funny. You know, it's all about self-respect. I mean, I've been there. Self-esteem and saying what you deserve and what you don't. You know, and I've worked hard to really love myself. So I love that. I'm here now. I love that. Fuck okay, yeah. That is so cool. Um, so, uh, you know, it seems like, did you make your uh, friend, uh, did he get downgraded, one could say, after last week's performance talking about you on stage? Yeah. I mean, I was like, because uh, I've been really busy. I'm filming a new Netflix show. Thank wow. you. Thank Are you. you uh, is it the new Sopranos? Are you playing Big Pussy? I would. <laughs> I would so much. I wish. Yeah. Um, uh, no, yes, Chroma Chris over there. A L- uh, little fun fact, Tony. We actually, uh, the crew here built the walls of a pussy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Our, our motto oh, is, uh, uh, our motto is, uh, if we build it, they will come. <laughs> <laughs> right. Chroma Chris coming off a another busy week. Silent but deadly. What's the, what's the Netflix show? I can't talk about it. You know Ooh. how it is. It's in pre-production. But you have been doing some great work with David Arquette lately. I, uh, I'm good yeah. friends with David, and uh, and he... Well, his sister was transgender, Alexis yeah. Arquette, and yeah. she was such a role model to me, God rest her soul. Uh-huh. Okay. I well, she's <laughs> she's not with us. I love... I mean, that is so That is so cool. Um, 
Yeah, because he's he's very serious about wrestling. I mean, he's really no. He, he is committed. Yeah. I'm telling you, he doesn't he doesn't play in the back room. He's super yeah. intense. He's super. I respect anybody, no matter what you do. I don't care if you're not funny or whatever. But when you're dedicated and you put passion, I respect that. Yeah. It takes a lot of balls yeah. to get up here. And you, you know, know, and you know a thing or two about I that. I do, I do. And Cole was right. My penis was bigger than his. Wow. And I, I knew how to She's use it. She's got a ghost better, penis. Cole. It's haunting Cole. Cole, is there anything and you'd like, like Netflix to? Uh, and is, like, there, is, there, is there anything you'd like to come up and? Yes, say come or up, Cole. Like that? Wow, look at this. Come up, yeah. just so that, just so that you can all see. How much control Cassandra I, has over this little boy? I this just became Maury, dude. Everyone yeah. is incredibly uncomfortable. Come on, come up here, Cole. Uh, look at this audience. Is there is, is there anything you'd like to say to Cassandra publicly uh, after this entire uh, after this whole charade that has happened? Uh, uh, yes, there is. Yeah, I want to say I am truly sorry for what I said last week. I should have portrayed you how you deserve to be. Can you face the camera? Yeah, face I thought I was facing you. Yeah, do 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 both. Face the camera yeah, and find talk your light. to her. Find your light. Okay. Give her give her the <laughs> send her the message. No, I am very sorry for what I said about her last week. Uh, I didn't mean it. Uh, it's not how I should have talked about her and not how I felt. And I am very sorry. How do sorry. you feel? Why don't you tell her how you do <laughs> Bring feel, <it> Cole? <laughs> Tell well, her come up here. Yeah. I'm here. <laughs> Stand up there. St I like that. Stand Join up there with yeah. him. I like that. <laughs> Go ahead, Cole. Stand up. Come on. Stand up. You Cassandra. like this position. Everything's fine. <laughs> Cassandra, give him a chance to give him a chance to tell you. Cassandra. I love you. <laughs> 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 That's very sweet. <laughs> but I will say, Cole, I like you more than anybody I like right now. Oh, so look at that. Too. Hell yeah. Should we kiss? Yeah, yeah sure. Are. Why not? Let's end <laughs> the episode with a bang. There they are, Cole Alexander. And Cassandra Cass closing out tonight's episode. Pride, Pride Month. Wow, look at that. Live from West Hollywood. What a way to end it. Pride Month, week, whatever it is, it has begun. How about one more time for Alexander Cole and Cassandra Cass, everybody? Look at that drawing from Ryan J. Ebelt of tonight's episode. Very cool. RyanJEbelt.com for all those prints. Ladies and gentlemen, come on. It's the Roastmaster General, Jeffrey Ross. The man, the myth, the legend. Thank you, Kill Tony. Historical Roast is on Netflix. Bumping mics with David Tells all over the country. California, Washington, New Jersey, Texas, New York. This weekend at Harrah's and uh, SoCal Morongo. Uh, also, Roast Battle is going to be a cluster fest in San Francisco. And the Comedy Central Roast of Alec Baldwin is coming up. So you're going to see him on all that. But check out Historical Roast, which is up right now. Go to RoastMasterGeneral.com for tickets and bumping mics. And, Thanks, uh, Tony. We love you, Jeff. Thanks so much for love joining you. Thanks us. Thanks for having me, Absolutely. man. Absolutely. Always a pleasure. Great, my great man. show tonight. Thank you. How about one more time for the great and powerful Jeremiah Watkins, everybody? Baloney Pete, his, uh, his brand new album is at uh, the top of the charts on Comedy iTunes right now. It's a self-titled album. Reagan and Watkins hit number one over the weekend. Uh, his new guest on Jeremiah Wonders is Pete Holmes. He's on YouTube at Jeremiah Watkins. He's on social media at Jeremiah Stand Up. Anything else, Jeremiah? Uh, yeah, uh, Reagan Watkins will be uh, headlining in San Diego on June 28th, and Joel Berg will be opening for us. And, uh, and then uh, we're also uh, headlining uh, Stand Up Live in Phoenix on uh, July 18th, and Joel Berg will be opening there as well. Oh, that's great. Look at that. That's amazing. How about one more time for Silent But Deadly, Chroma Chris, everybody. Heck yeah, Chroma. What do you think of tonight's episode? 
Uh, we really uh, we really raised the roof, Tony. Yes, you did. Come on, how about one more time for the great Joelberg, Joel Jimenez, everyone. We did it. Joelberg's on social media, mostly sorry. He's going to be heading out with us to, uh, to all the rest of these gigs that we have announced here uh, so far. Joel, you're traveling all over the world now. What's going on, dude? I love it, dude. Shout out to Ludwig Drums. I love you guys. Peace out. I'll see you on tour. Heck yeah. Remember, we're taking pins with us. We got the road posters with us. So those of you coming to uh, these road shows, fucking get ready. We're going to have a lot of fun. I promise you that. Uh, Red Band, anything else? Hey, I just got a new Death Squad studio in Burbank, so look for a bunch of new podcasts in the next month. Hey, thank you so much, live audience. We'll see you guys again soon. We love you. Good night. Thank you.